can see I've already removed the gas line from the gas tank. I've drained through a siphon about five gallons out of it to get it ready to go. Up here is the, uh, the vent line. I've got it off. And I've loosened the bolts and I've got it ready to drop. So this is going to be step one. I got to get the gas tank out in order to drill a return line in it. Okay, I've got the gas tank out of the car. It's laying here on the floor. I put a new gas tank in when I bought the car. The old one was really rusty. This has been in since uh, 2012. I put a piece of EPDM rubber on it, which is rubber roofing material, just to kind of insulate it against the bottom of the car. That seemed to work pretty good. If you haven't taken a gas tank out before, there's a strap on each end. It's got a little clip that, that hooks onto the back side, the front side. There's a bolt right here. You can see the two bolts hanging right there. Um, that's about it. The filler neck is fixed on this gas tank. It just shoves through that hole right up in there. Right here is the uh, access port for the sending unit into the top of the gas tank. So this is about the easiest part of the project. My uh, equipment doesn't get delivered till later today. I'll go ahead and clean the gas tank out, uh, get it ready for drilling the return line, and get started on the rest of the project. Well, I've got my tank out. I got all the fuel out of it yesterday, and I've got my shop vac hooked up to the tank, and I've been blowing air through it at about five minutes at a time, about once an hour for about, I've done it a half a dozen times now. I am not going to fill it with water. I'm going to turn the fan, or turn the shop vac back on when I start drilling. It blows a tremendous amount of air through the tank. A lot of fresh air is coming through. There's a slight odor of gasoline, but nothing like when there was fuel in the tank. So right now I'm looking for a spot to put the uh, return line. There's all kinds of little dents across the front of the tank, plus I have to miss where the straps go, so I think I'm going to put it right here. I've got the little rubber gasket, and I'm just going to get that to lay flat. And I'm going to say right here is where I want to drill. There's a little tiny uh, notch right here that this gasket fits on, so as you tighten it up, you want to make sure you don't have that thing cockeyed. So I've got this threaded in. Stick that in the hole. One inch wrench and a half inch wrench. Watch the video of me doing this. It didn't look this hard. Okay, if you look up here, you can see I've got a pilot hole drilled in the exhaust. It was a bit of a challenge to get that much. I uh, don't know what I'm going to do next, but I got my uh, battery drill up there. I chopped off a bit, and that's how much room I had to get my battery drill in. Now I've got to enlarge that hole, so let me see what I can do next. 
Well, as you can see, I've got the hole enlarged. I was able to stick the uh, step drill in on a slight angle with my battery drill, and I got it drilled. But it's uh, a very tough place. This is kind of what I had to do, if you can see anything here. But I did manage to get the drill in the hole on an angle. I got it up in there. There's just a little bit more to drill. That's about the only good place I could find that I could get to. The nice clamps that I got uh, to put that bug in won't work on my pipe. Uh, they're for two and a half inch or something, slightly more than this. My car's got dual exhaust and they're two inch pipes on each side. So I just got some regular uh, muffler clamps. It appears that this is all going to work. I got the hole drilled. I went ahead and screwed the uh, O2 sensor into the bung before I mounted it. I'll get this thing uh, all tightened up and on to the next step. Well, we've reached the next part of the project. I'm about to dive into the engine bay and remove the old carburetor. This is all pretty plain vanilla stuff here. I don't think anybody needs to watch detailed stuff here. So I'm going to put the camera away, rip this apart, and get ready for the next spot. Okay, carburetor is off. It took about 10 minutes to disconnect the throttle linkage, the vacuum to the distributor, the choke uh, fuel line. So I also had to make a quick run over to the uh, auto parts store. The studs on the carburetor that I had were too long for the uh, EFI unit. Well, suddenly it looks like I've got something done. You put the uh, new studs in, you put the EFI unit on, and it, and it looks great. The uh, Throttle linkage, uh, I had to screw that in two revolutions to get it the right length. And it appears I have full range of motion with, with just that minor change. The fitting that, that held the um, throttle case or the throttle linkage on is not going to work on this thing. I'll have to get something different. My next problem is I need to install a water temperature sensor. The only place I've got to do that is right there where my heating line is. I bought some stuff at the uh, at hardware store to do this, but it, I don't know if it's going to be a problem or not. We'll have to see. It, it's, the sensor would be better if it was screwed directly into the intake manifold. I got a T to screw it into, and that's going to get it a little bit further away. Hopefully it gets hot enough to tell the system what it needs to know. Well, for the first day I got quite a bit done. I was a little concerned about just exactly how I was going to mount the uh, the fuel unit, but there's a little shelf down in here. Got it mounted right there. The top of the gauge is going to be right up into this area just to the right of the hood latch. So there's plenty of space for that. I've got the uh, plumbing done. I've got the uh, cold water or the hot water sensor stuck in a T and, and a heating unit on the other side of it. I hope that works out okay. It, uh, it seems like the sensor may be a little too far from the hottest part of the manifold, but it's about all I can do. Throttle connection is pretty normal. It looks good. Works full range. Mounting the unit was no problem. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow afternoon, I'll work on fuel lines, return lines, and start working on uh, getting all the electrical hooked up. What we finally have here is a completed project. We got all the parts installed. Obviously, this is the uh, fuel unit or the electronic fuel unit right here in the middle. Here's the uh, added connection I had to put on my throttle rod. This is the fuel line from the unit that's providing the high pressure. This is my positive crankcast ventilation line that comes up from down below. This is the return line that comes all the way back over to uh, a T that I have right here. And that T comes off the fuel 
unit which needs a return line to the gas tank and then this is the fuel line that comes from my original pump which comes up here so and then there's a uh, a new line to the distributor a new vacuum line and of course here's the uh, temperature sensing unit and then over here I've installed the return line from the heater which used to be right here so I've also got uh, some of the electrical components screwed on the firewall and everything runs back to the gas tank I've had it running everything seems to be running well one other thing, I had to change this spring right here. This is the uh, throttle return spring. The throttle return spring that's on the uh, electronic fuel injection unit was stronger than this throttle spring on the old carburetor. So my uh, accelerator was not working properly. When I would push on the accelerator, this, this unit here would disengage. It's like what happens when you uh, hit the accelerator hard and it downshifts the transmission. Well, I made this spring a little stronger by removing three coils from it. And now that seems to be working all fine.